Uh, we saw in the um, uh, previous lecture that uh, addition of reheat to the basic Brayton cycle increases the specific work output, but the uh, efficiency both the first law and second law uh, decreases since we uh, supply additional heat, but um, the additional heat more than offsets the work that is developed number one. Number two, the rate of exergy destruction in the uh, reheat um, uh, portion. Uh, also is uh, non-zero now. So, that increases the overall rate of exergy destruction during heat addition in the cycle and the um, rate of exergy destruction in the um, uh, in the heat rejection portion also increases because I am sorry. Uh, because as you could as you can see uh, the temperature at the exit of uh, turbine 2 which is the low pressure turbine uh, is actually uh, more now. So, uh, just like before this is usually called the high pressure turbine and this is usually called the low pressure turbine just like what we uh, um, what we said for uh, the Rankine cycle. So, the temperature at the uh, end of expansion in the low pressure turbine is uh, higher now. So, that means that the rate of exergy destruction uh, during the um, uh, heat, trans heat uh, transfer to the ambient is also more and we could um, uh, you could see that in our calculation. So, if you look at rate of exergy destruction I am sorry we have not calculated that, but if you do then uh, it would be higher ok. So, the rate of exergy destruction during the heat addition process is higher because of the additional uh, heat addition in the reheat part of the cycle and the rate of exergy destruction during the heat rejection process is also more because the air enters uh, the condenser or the cooler at a much higher temperature than before. And um, uh, the exergy destructions in both the, um, uh, the heat addition part and the heat rejection part are higher due to two reasons. Number one, the amount of heat itself increases and number two, the temperature difference across the, um, the source and the air when it enters uh, the uh, heat addition or heat rejection phase is also higher. So, there are two factors which are contributing to increased uh, exergy destruction in the heat addition and heat rejection part of the cycle and this is what we would like to address now. So, uh, so reheat increases the specific power, but both the first law and second law efficiency go down. Intercooling as we wanted reduces the compressor power ok. We wanted the compressor power to be as uh, uh, small as possible. So, intercooling we saw uh, does uh, reduce the uh, compressor power. However, for a given uh, turbine entry temperature the amount of heat that has to be supplied uh, increases because the air now leaves the second stage compressor at a lower temperature than, uh, than a single stage compressor. Now, this has to be viewed as a penalty uh, because the objective of uh, intercooling is to reduce the compressor power that has been met, but that has been met at the cost of increased heat addition. So, there is a downside uh, to uh, intercooling. Okay. So, we would like to address uh, these issues uh, next by improving uh, the uh, performance of the cycle. Let us see what is possible. Okay. Now, uh, if I look at the, if I start with the basic Brayton cycle, let us start with the basic Brayton cycle. So, in the basic Brayton cycle, you can see that the air enters the condenser or leaves the turbine at a temperature of 540 Kelvin, whereas the temperature of the uh, air as it enters the combustor is 770 Kelvin. One uh, idea that uh, or one strategy that we wish to pursue is to see whether we can take the heat from the stream after expansion in the turbine and transfer it or use it to heat the air before it enters the combustor. Now, if we are successful in doing this, it will address both the deficiencies simultaneously. By transferring this heat, the amount of heat from one stream to the other, uh, the amount of heat that is rejected will go down and the amount of heat that has to be supplied will also go down. It will address that number one. Number two, because we are, um, uh, we are heating the air before it enters the combustor, the temperature difference between the source 
from which heat is supplied and the air when it enters the combustor becomes smaller. So, the rate of exergy destruction due to the external irreversibility goes down. Simultaneously, because the uh, air after expansion of the turbine uh, transfers part of its enthalpy to the incoming air, when this air enters the condenser or the cooler, its temperature is actually less than before. So, the temperature difference of the air when it enters the condenser compared to the ambient temperature is less now. So, the rate of exergy destruction will be less uh, in the condenser. So, this if it it is possible to transfer heat from the uh, stream after it leaves the uh, turbine before it enters the condenser to the air after it leaves the compressor before it enters the combustor. If that is possible, then we would reduce the amount of heat that is supplied or that is rejected. Number one, we also reduce the temperature difference between the source and the air stream. Okay. Now, if you look at the basic cycle, it is clear that the strategy is not possible, it is not viable because the temperature at the end of expansion is less than the temperature of the air when it enters the uh, combustor. So, heat cannot be transferred from the air uh, at uh, state 4s to air at state 2s. So, this is clearly not viable. Now, if we look at uh, intercooling. You can see that the temperature at the end of expansion remains the same 540 Kelvin. However, the temperature now at um, the temperature at entry to the combustor is 486. So, definitely heat can be transferred from here to here. Now, let us look at uh, reheat. So, the temperature at the end of expansion is even higher now, it was 540, now it is 850 and the uh, temperature at the end of uh, compression as we can see is still is 770 because this is single stage compression. So, there is definitely a favorable uh, temperature difference. So, heat can still be transferred uh, from the air after expansion of the turbine to the air before it enters the uh, combustor. So, this uh, temperature difference is uh, still appreciable, some heat trans, uh, can be transferred. However, the maximum benefit will be realized if we have a cycle which incorporates both intercooling as well as reheat because in that case, the temperature, uh, temperature at the end of expansion will be 850 and the temperature at the end of the compression process is going to be 486. So, this uh, temperature difference is the maximum and so maximum amount of heat transfer is possible from the air after expansion to the air before it enters the combustor. So, that is actually the strategy that we are going to pursue. So, this uh, strategy of uh, transferring uh, enthalpy from the um, uh, from the stream after expansion to the uh, uh, to the air before it enters the combustor is called regeneration okay so this we have already mentioned the temperature at the end of the second stage turbine is higher when reheat is employed okay so, there is scope for heating the air as we just saw before it enters the combustion chamber by utilizing the exhaust heat from the um, either the second stage turbine or even in the case of uh, a single stage turbine, if uh, intercooling is employed, we saw that there was still about 100 plus Kelvin temperature difference. So, it is there is still scope for regeneration there. Okay. So, this strategy is very, very similar to its uh, counterpart in the Rankine cycle and so this is called the regeneration. Okay. Now, in the case of Brayton cycle, there is no penalty that accompanies regeneration unlike in the case of Rankine cycle. Rankine cycle, the steam was extracted from the turbine partially. So, there was a penalty on the specific power, but in the case of the Brayton cycle, no such extraction takes place. So, there is no accompanying or concomitant penalty in the specific power. So, basically the regenerator is also a heat exchanger. So, we take the air at the um, uh, end of uh, compression process and send it to the regenerator. So, the air goes from state 2 to state x where its temperature increases. So, T x is greater than T 2 or more importantly H x is greater than H 2. 
So, the air at state x is then sent to the combustor where heat addition takes place. Now, the air that comes out of the turbine at state 4 is sent to the uh, is sent to the regenerator and it uh, transfers uh, its enthalpy to the air before it enters the combustor. So, enthalpy transfer takes place and this air then leaves at state y and uh, as you can see h y is less than h 4 and then it enters the condenser where or cooler where it uh, loses heat to the ambient that is the general idea and the performance metric for the regenerator is the effectiveness epsilon ok. So, this is the effectiveness is the effectiveness epsilon and that is defined like this hx minus h2 the actual enthalpy transfer for the air stream uh, before it enters the combustor divided by the maximum enthalpy transfer that is possible. So, the maximum enthalpy transfer is, uh, is, is h4 minus h2 right. So, that is uh, how effectiveness is defined. So, let us now uh, incorporate regeneration in a cycle which has intercooling, reheat, intercooling and reheat ok. So, in such a case as you can see uh, the air undergoes a, a, a two stage compression process. So, the temperature uh, or state at the end of uh, compression is 4 s and then uh, it is uh, heated from state 4 s to 4 x um, in the uh, regenerator. So, uh, this is the regenerator and this is the combustor. So, from state x to state 5 heat is added in the combustor, it undergoes expansion in the high pressure turbine. Then this is the reheat portion and this is the low pressure turbine, it undergoes expansion in the low pressure turbine and the, this uh, air uh, exchanges its heat with the incoming air. So, this is also in the uh, regenerator. Then finally, heat is lost uh, to the ambient in the cooler. So, let us look at the uh, performance of uh, this cycle. Let us first start with the table, then we will uh, go back to this ok. So, uh, state 1, so if you look at this uh, cycle, state 1, 2s, 3, 4s, up to 4s is the same as what we had in the uh, two stage compression with intercooling. So, these values may be directly taken from there, two stage compression with intercooling up to 4s. State 5 is the same for all the cases, it is the temperature, uh, it is a state at the exit of the combustor. So, we already have the values for this. Notice that uh, state uh, 6s, 7 and 8s are the same as uh, in the reheat cycle. So, these values may be uh, taken from uh, the uh, Brayton cycle with reheat. Now, all we need to do is uh, determine h x and h y, uh, s x and s y corresponding to uh, state x, uh, state x and y. So, the effectiveness of the heat exchanger is given to be 0 0.9. Notice that all the uh, other values in this definition are known. So, we may evaluate h x to be uh, 838.569. So, we may go to the table uh, with this value for the uh, so, we may go to the table with uh, this value for h x and retrieve specific entropy to be 1.76205. I am sorry, uh, we get the uh, we get s 0 to be this and then from s 0 by using the expression for s, we may calculate uh, s to be equal to this. Remember, uh, the pressure at x is the same as the uh, pressure at the end of compression. So, we get S0 from the table and then we can uh, use the expression given earlier to calculate S. Now, if you apply steady flow energy equation to the uh, uh, to the regenerator, we get this expression from which we can evaluate HY. We can uh, go to the table 
and retrieve S0 and then calculate uh, S. Notice that since uh, the, the pressure at the end of expansion is 100 kilo Pascal, uh, the S0 that we retrieve here is the, uh, the S that we calculate is the same as the S0 that we retrieve here. So, now uh, we have the property values uh, that we need at uh, all the uh, state points. Okay? Notice that once we have the uh, effectiveness uh, for the uh, regenerator, Hx may be calculated and then by applying steady flow energy equation, simple energy balance, we can get Hy also. Okay. So, uh, this is a two stage compression process. So, we may evaluate the uh, compressor work like this, which is the same as what we had earlier with um, uh, two stage with intercooling, two stage compression with intercooling. Again, the power produced by uh, HPT and LPT together come out to be 1037. Uh, heat added now, as we have shown here, notice that the heat added in the combustor is uh, from state X to state 5 and the heat added in the reheat portion of the cycle is from state 6s to state 7. So, heat added is H5 minus Hx plus 7 minus 6s, which works out to 1075.92. Now, heat rejected in the cycle Qc is H2s minus H3. So, H2s minus H3 is the heat rejected here and heat rejected in the cooler is over here. So, that is Hy minus H1, which comes out to 4175.78. So, the uh, efficiency of the cycle now comes out to be 61.36 percent, which is definitely higher than what whatever we had earlier. So, the rate at which exergy is supplied uh, comes out to be 1204. The rate as, at which exergy is recovered is 1037. So, the second law efficiency is 86.1 which again is approaching the value that we had for the basic cycle. The rate of exergy destruction in the heat addition process now, remember the peak temperature in the cycle uh, remains the same, right. So, the rate of exergy destruction now comes out to be 58.686 and uh, this should be uh, compared we can compare this with the uh, with the value corresponding value for the uh, intercooling uh, cycle let us just do that so it's uh, 115.6 so uh, rate uh, rate of uh, uh, exergy destruction during the heat addition process certainly has come down and rate of uh, exergy destruction during the heat rejection process has also decreased but now, uh, we have exergy destruction in the regenerator, which has to be added uh, uh, to the process. So, but still that is not a very large amount, that is a small amount. So, overall we see uh, an increase in specific power, we see an increase in first law efficiency and we see an increase in second law efficiency, which is summarized in this table here. So, for the basic cycle, uh, we started out with 59.8 for first law efficiency. 89.1 for second law efficiency and specific work was 362.7. Now, intercooling, intercooling as a result of intercooling, thermal efficiency reduced, second law efficiency also reduced, but the specific power improved. Okay, so, this went up. Now, with addition of reheat to the basic cycle, the specific power improves even more. However, the, uh, uh, the first law and the second law efficiency both decrease further. Now, with the addition of uh, regeneration uh, to this cycle with intercooling with the two stage compression with intercooling as well as reheat, the uh, first law efficiency is uh, higher now even higher than the basic cycle. Second law efficiency is also quite high, very close to what we had for the basic cycle and the specific power is the highest. So, all three performance parameters of the cycle show extremely good uh, values when we employ regeneration. So, that is the key. So, reheat and uh, two stage compression or multi stage compression, uh, they affect 
the specific power output in a positive sense. Both of them increase the specific power output, but at the cost of efficiency, both first law and second law. Addition of regenerator to the cycle uh, retains the advantage that we had uh, as a result of reheat and um, uh, multi-stage compression, but it improves the first law and the second law efficiency to values which are comparable to the basic cycle, if not even slightly higher than that of the basic cycle. So, any practical uh, Brayton cycle, of course, for land based power generation utilizes uh, this cycle, ok. But uh, regeneration is difficult to implement in the case of uh, aircraft engines because it adds to the weight of the engine and uh, for aerospace applications, propulsion applications, uh, weight is a very critical factor. Thrust to weight of the engine is a very important performance parameter. So, uh, so, the regenerator, it is not practical to add regenerator to aircraft engine, uh, aircraft engines. So, we will start um, discussing uh, air standard cycles corresponding to uh, internal combustion engines in the next lecture.